same position, guys, you're gonna make the same grips. So again, this is a systematic approach. You go for the, the last move every single time unless car makes an adjustment. First grip's the same. This grip keeps him from, if I can stem it with the grip, I don't care. Um, I was watching these guys drilling, some of these guys were grabbing in here, making grips and stuff, I don't really care. That's not a danger to me. I still make this grip. As long as he can't underhook this leg, no deep half, no X guard. This hand's here, I'm still making my grip here, and I'm still bringing my knee in. Then the foot comes up for pressure, then I switch my grip. This grip is no TV now. Now I sit through, walk back, going the cross face, 100 kilos. Let's just say car makes a little bit of an adjustment. First grip stays the same. Yeah. So now from this position, I'm here. I try to bring my knee through, and as I try to car pinch, you see guys pinch with his knees? The option now is the wee pass, these positions. Now normally, when you taught this, it was all lower body pressure. So say I was here and Carl comes in and goes for his wee pass. He makes that grip. We always learned it. We would grab the pants somewhere around here. And then Carl would put shoulder pressure on me. If you notice, there's no upper body control. So we're now when Carl tries to work the pass, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Perfect, take it back. In reality, this usually happens. The way he's not controlling my upper body and I can circle with him. Another thing, just turn back on here again. Mm -hmm. If he makes that grip and there's space here, I can cut this. Push it off, make the grip hard. I can push this off, kick up, and now I'm into my whole game. So, the detail is positioning of that grip at the hip and controlling lower body and upper body, which will make this pass workable. Nothing's changed. I make my first grip. Stops deep half, stops X. Second grip's the same, giving me the option. Knee slice, that's what I want. As you start to bring my knee in, car clamps, it fills that space. He stopped my leg, but he won't stop my hand. Instead of me making the grip here, I'm gonna come into the hip. I make a grip on the pants, and I put my fist on the mat. So now if car tries to bring that hand in to push that off, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Again, I want to be making shoulder pressure, Car knows Jiu Jitsu, he'll keep that knee high. So I might have to let go of this hand. I am keeping this knee back, push this down and re grab. And my head goes on his shoulder, and now I try to pull it up. Now, if Carl is making crossed ankles, sort of two ways he'll play a knee shield, he might play it with a foot on the hip and a knee on this hip. And we talked about box principle. Um, another way of playing it was with that crossed ankles, would be more of a no-gi way. But even from there, if he's crossed ankles, when I try to up, I can put a lot of sprawling pressure on him. With this fist on the mat and shoulder pressure, I have lower body control. Before we even think about the pass, we want upper body control. So with this grip from here and my head on the shoulder, when I try to up, the arrow practice position again. Car's knees are pointing to his right. I make his head point to his left. I walk all the way around the north south. My knees are off the mat, there's pressure on him. Space at his right hip, I fill it with my knee. You can hear the groans of car, that's not nice. When the cross face, hand comes through, 100 kilos. Again. That's why it's called a pressure pass. You should be putting him in so much discomfort that he just wants you to pass. So, nothing's changed very well. Grip is the same, stops deep half, stops X guard. Second grip on the pants here. I try to hit the knee slice, car clamps. It won't stop my hand coming in. Comes in at the hip and I put pressure on it by putting my fist on the mat. Okay. From there, my head is going to the, his, left, his left shoulder, 
and he sprawl up onto a tripod, if he still has connection with his ankles, a sprawl combined with that chiropractor's position, we start walking to north south. Notice the space at Carl's right hip. I'm going to pull that. This grip on the lapel switches to the top there. And before I take my right arm out, I can make him look to his left. Second hand is down. So, from knee shield, grip one, grip two, attempt the knee slice if he's a clamp, hand comes in. Make the grip on the pants. If it's key, it's no use of those grips. Put my fist on the mat. If Charles' knee is high and I can't get that bite with my shoulder, because what do I want to do? I want his knees pointing one way and his head pointing the other way. Just putting him in an uncomfortable position. So I might have to, if that knee's high, be smart. I might have to let go, push it, and just get the bite. Knee grip, pin the shoulder, tripod up, and he's hanging on to that leg. I'll sprawl a little bit. The detail is now, I have lower body control, I want upper body control before I initiate the class. So I'm walking the north side, combining it with that neck crank and I'm here. Notice the space of Carr's right hip. I fill it first. That grip at the collar wins the cross face pressure. Control the near side hip to start guard retention. Thunder kicks. <laughs> 